Caretakers of the Cosmos, roll call! Snacks, the Snacker. I'm Cricket. Gallagher. Pandora. <laughs> Torpedo Taz. I am Coot. And I'm your fearless and dashingly handsome leader, Fun Savior. Together, we're the caretakers of the Cosmos. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold it right there, buddy. What are you guys doing here? Is there a problem, Mac? There sure is, and the name's not Mac, it's Stanley, or to people like you, Mr. Lawsuit. And you guys are a mock of the Guardians of the Galaxy from the competition. The four of you are from DC Comics, or as I like to call them, Brand F. And the three of you, you come from the company that owns DC Comics, Warner Brothers. Did someone say Warner Brothers? Hello, Stan. Listen, bub, we don't know anything about these Guardians of the Galaxy people that you're talking about. We're just a bunch of ragtag misfits who just so happen to be at the right place at the right time with a coming enemy, and we decide to bend together and stop him. We don't know anything about those guys. Besides, we've got lots of talent. Let's show them, gang. Ooga chaga, ooga, ooga, 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 ooga I'm hooked on a feeling. I'm high on believing that you're in love with uh, a me. Okay, okay, I get it. You're not the Guardians of the Galaxy. You're a group of completely different characters. But I get out of here before the boss shows up. Oh boy, are those the new Guardians of the Galaxy that I ordered? Ha! Huh? Gosh, ha! Huh? They look swell. All they need is a little touch-up in the makeup department, and no one will be able to tell the difference. Hot dog, they're perfect. Follow me, gang, and we'll get you all set up. We're going to keep milking this cow even after it dries up. Ha! Huh? Booyah! Taz get makeup. I am Coot. I have to agree with Coot on this one. There's something about that fellow that I do not like. Oh, can it, you two? We'll be fine. After all, this is a golden opportunity for us. Um, excuse me, uh, uh sir? I hear you've got another duck here. Well, you won't be needing him anymore now that I'm here. So, you might want to get rid of him. There's not enough room in this joint for two ducks, you know. They don't know him very well, do they? Boop. Hope Sun Savior and the crew know what they're getting into. But who knows? They'll be all right, though. Eh, maybe. Uh, anyway, your old Uncle Padrino back again with another new movie review. So, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. I was going to say Volume 3 first, but corrected myself. Um, huh, this is uh, the first big movie of the uh, summer movie going season. And... In a way, it may dictate uh, how the movie going season for the summer will go uh, as far as how the audience receives it. Um, uh, this is also uh, the the last hurrah, um, the the ultimate, the 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 Omega, uh, the final countdown um, uh, graduations of graduation of sorts. Um, and which is perfect, actually, because this is for high school and college. This is graduation season uh, of this of the crew of this crew of characters. All right. This may be the last Guardians of the Galaxy movie that we'll get. Maybe possibly there, there could be a possibility of more. Um, and the reason I say that is because uh, comic book nerds, we know that with teams and comic books, there's always a changing roster. And it often depends on the writer, um, you know, the. Uh, the Avengers did it. The X-Men did it. The Simpsons did it. That's a joke. That didn't really happen, but it's a joke if you get the reference. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, the Fantastic Four did it. The Outsiders did it. The Justice League, Justice League did it. And the Teen Titans did it. So it's nothing new. OK, uh, Spider-Man was a member of the Avengers. He's all he was also a member of the Fantastic Four at one point as well. Um, 
Jennifer Walters, uh, She-Hulk. She was a part of the Fantastic Four as well at one point. Hank McCoy, Beast from the X-Men, was a part of the Avengers at one point as well. Um, the Justice League, there was a time when Batman and, uh, not Batman, but Superman and Wonder Woman weren't a part of the league. It was Batman, uh, Martian Manhunter, uh, Green Lantern, Guy Gardner, uh, Dr. Light, and Blue Beetle. Uh, not the current Blue Beetle, Jaime, but uh, Ted, uh, the I think the second Blue Beetle. So, it happens. So there is a possibility of there being more movies, but just with a different roster of characters. All right. So um, I don't, I'm hoping I'm not going to get your hopes up too high, but you know, there is always going to be a possibility. All right. So I've always known of the, I, I, I've always known of the Guardians of the Galaxy, but I didn't know them. Uh, allow me to explain. Uh, when I was a teenager and I was going to the comic book store, uh, I would see Guardians of the Galaxy comic books here and there and whatnot. And, but it wasn't enough for me to, it wasn't interesting enough for me to pick up and read and get into them. Um, by the way, going back to the roster thing, uh, Yandu, uh, was one of the founding members of the, of, of, of the original group. And so was the, if you go back to volume two, uh, the character made of crystal that was voiced by Michael Rosenbaum, he was uh, one of the founding members as well of the original group as well. So again, roster changes, okay? But anyway, it wasn't enough for me to want to actually find out more about them, all right? So that's what I mean when I say I knew of them, but I didn't know them. Um, and that's where James Gunn comes in. And that's what I appreciate about him with this. You know, he's taking, uh, let's be honest, uh, C list or D list characters and he, you know, these obscure quirky characters and shining a spotlight on them and saying, Hey, look at these guys, pay attention. They're cool characters. You may like them or you may like the way that I make them out. Okay. So, I think that's a very good thing for uh, them. I mean, when you look back and go, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 1, I mean, who are these characters and whatnot? And, you know, they, they, they turned out to be a hit. Everybody loved them, and they became a thing. So kudos to him on that and, and for Marvel, you know, sticking by him with that. Okay, so let's talk about the story, all right? Good story. I liked it. I had no issues with it. Um, well, I'm sorry, I do have issues with it. But as far, the the movie clocks in at about mm, slightly over two hours. But for the for the entire time, I, it didn't feel like two hours for me. It kept me engaged. It kept me interested. I liked what I saw. Uh, there are some few things that I would change here and there and whatnot. Some things that didn't that ne didn't need to be there and whatnot. But overall, good story. I had no issues with it. Um, and and as far as uh, as far as the story being emotional goes, it is very emotional, as it should be. Uh, and and I'll get to that later. Uh, but but um, let's go. Let's talk about the negatives of this movie. Uh, okay, as far as the story goes. Okay, um, one. There are three negatives. One. Um, Adam Warlock. The character Adam Warlock, waste of time, waste of space in this movie, okay? Um, why? If you've read uh, Infinity, uh, Infinity, um, Infinity War and the Infinity Gauntlet comics, you know who Adam Warlock is, how he operates, and his connection with Thanos. And he was heavily involved in both of those events. So, um, it didn't, it would have, it, 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 in this movie, he is the exact opposite of that. I mean, he's only Adam Warlock in name and name only, and that's it. He's a wasted time, a waste of time and a wasted character. And and with his connection to Thanos, he should have been introduced back in, in the Infinity Saga. And I know they were kind of doing that with the stinger at the end of uh, Volume 2. Um, but he should have been a major part of it anyway by that point in time. And look... I get it. Again, the stinger at the end of volume two, you know, the cocoon and Adam Warlock was going to hatch out of it and whatnot. And, you know, and, and I, they, there had to be a payoff. If I were watching this movie, I would have said, hey, what about Adam Warlock in this movie? I mean, they showed him at the end of the of volume two. Why is he in this one? So I can understand there had to be a payoff in this as far as the, as far as that character goes. But Anyone who's a fan of Adam Warlock, who's ever read the com read him read about read him that where he was involved in any of the comics, comic stories, uh, in all honesty, you're going to be disappointed and, and and upset about this character. Okay, um, number two, 
this isn't really a negative, but it, but it is an annoyance. All right. Um, uh, uh, the trailers and the commercials make you, you know, uh, feed on your emotions and, and, and it, it makes you say it makes they're making you think that somebody is going to die and one of the main crew members are going to die in this movie, you know, say goodbye and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, they're playing off of your emotions to get more butts and seats. OK, so, I mean, it kind of like how uh, how Wakanda Forever was with Chadwick Boseman after he passed away. You know, it was it, it was there to put butts and seats. Again, marketing ploy. I get it. I I don't like it. It's annoying, but I get why they do it. Um, uh, and and I'm gonna spoil this for you. No one dies. All right. Um, and um, but it's like like if you're playing Uno, right? And in your hand, in in, in your hand, you have you know the. Uh, pick four, change color, and the reverse card in your hand. And one or two people that you're playing with know it, and you pull one card and go, ah, 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 no. And, and it's just like, what the heck? So that's how it turned out. I and mean, that's how what, what happened as far as that all goes, okay? It, it was just a huge tease, okay? Just, just forewarning, all right? Now, issue number three, and this is the big one. Um... There are some actions that take place in this movie um, that are going to be that are going to make this movie uncomfortable for people who have certain sensibilities. Uh, that's probably the best way to describe it. Um, uh, think of it like this: uh, the movie is it, 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 the issues uh, uh, are part it, are part the movie, the island of Dr. Monroe, part. Of, of the species from, uh, of a particular species from Star Trek TNG um, and um, parts of the movie, The Secret of Nim. And if you, if you understand, it, 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 that's what you're basically getting if you, if you get my, if you get my drift, okay? So um, a lot of these actions take place off screen, all right? And, um, but it is very heavily implied and um and you do see the results of said actions uh, as well um um it can be horrifying in a sense um and, and don't get me wrong there is payback there there their justice is dealt <laughs> trust me but uh, for people with certain system sensibilities you may wince you 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 may cringe you, you may get triggered and i don't like using the word triggered but that that there's a possibility that may happen and that's probably what's going to hurt this movie you know the watch the rewatchability of this movie um it, it uh, some people may not want to uh, may not want to see and or hear about some of these things and some kids they may not want to expose their kids to it and some kids may you not know, may may be upset by by hearing and or seeing some of these things that happen on that happen in this movie all right um, that's a warning. All right. I, 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 and, may, and, 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 and it's your call. I don't want to be the reason that, you know, you, you, you and you and, uh, you and, or your kid are both in therapy because of the, uh, the tra traumacy of this movie. I mean, you know, Hey, we had the secret of Nim and we had, uh, the Lion King, we had Bambi, we had Transformers, the movie. So, I mean, Hey, I mean, yeah, they're different, you know, much more different than this. But I mean, they're there. All right. So um, as far as the actors go, everyone's here. Everyone's doing their thing. Um, they, they, they're they playing the characters that, that, that you both know and love and care about and 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 doing the things that they that their characters do. All right. Um, uh, for all my voice actor nerds out there, for uh, for you, my fellow voice actor nerds out there, keep an ear open for D. Bradley Baker. Um, he's a voice actor. If you don't know him, look him up. Um, he's very good at what he does and very amazing at what he does. Uh, he uh, 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 think of I think of him like um, Frank Welker for the next generation. He's that good. Okay. Um, one of the things I do have to bring up though, and, and that I've always wanted to bring up uh, about Rocket Raccoon. Um, Go back to the early 2000s. Uh, there was a series, an animated series called Earth, uh, 
uh, Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and made by fans for fans. It was very, very true to the comics uh, to an extent, kind of like how Batman and the animated series was. So um, there was an episode, uh, I think in season three or season four, I'm almost certain it was season three, there was an episode where the Guardians of the Galaxy made a guest appearance in, and Rocket Raccoon, uh, they gave him, uh, um, when he spoke, he spoke with the British English, Cockney, whatever you want to call it, accent. And um, if you played uh, the video game Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Rocket Raccoon is in is a playable character in that game as well. And they use the same voice actors from that game uh, from that episode in the game as well. But I don't know if anyone never if anyone knows this, but Rocket Raccoon is part of the name Rocket Raccoon is part of a lyric in one of the Beatles songs. And so for me in the cartoon to have him speak with a British accent with an English accent, I thought that was a very creative, that was a good creative choice, you know, because it ties it all together with the Beatles and with the England, with England and whatnot and its name. So when the first Guardians of the Galaxy came out, I thought, you know, I was kind of disappointed that Bradley Cooper was doing his voice in, in, a, in a, in a, in a, in an American accent, basically. And, and that's nothing against Bradley Cooper. And maybe that's what Sean Gunn and and J no, James Gunn, I'm sorry, James Gunn and what uh, Marvel wanted was, it was, you know, hey, just do whatever. And I get it. Celebrities, and, you know, they all think that they, that puts butts in seats. And, and so I get it. But it would have been nice if he spoke with a with an English accent. Um, uh, as far as that as far as anything else goes, as far uh, let me touch on the issue of the emotional aspect of it. Look, as I mentioned earlier, graduation, uh, we've been hanging out with these characters for a very long time when you really think about it. Um, from obscurity to volume one, to volume two, to uh, uh, Infinity War, to Endgame, to Love and Thunder, and now to volume three. And, oh, and the Christmas special, which I still haven't watched yet. I've heard it's very good. So we've been with these characters for a long time. And, and just like in high school, you have, you, you, you know, you have your group of friends and you've gone on all these good and, and good and bad wacky adventures and had and experienced all these good and bad things together amongst each other. So it's it is kind of sad to see this all come to an end. There's a reason why people connect themselves with certain movies certain series of movies, certain series of TV shows and animated shows, live action and animated, I should say, certain series of books and whatnot, because you're going on this journey with them for for X amount of time. And, you know, it's kind of sad to see them go. So with this being emotional, there isn't anything wrong with that. I, I think that it is perfectly reasonable for people to be emotional about this. So um, uh, as far as you know, as far as the actors go, um, Batista has actually come out and said, you know, look, I don't want to do, I don't want to be a part of it anymore. I don't want to be Drax anymore. He wants to expand his acting chops. And I understand that makes sense. Okay. Uh, Zoe Saldana is, uh, basically tired of being Gamora and, and, and I understand that as well. I mean, having to put on all the makeup and whatnot and, and do all of this for several hours a day. Yeah, it, 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 it can wear out its welcome. And so she's just a little tired of it. I get that as well. Chris Pratt is the only actor that says that he he's open for coming back for being Star-Lord again. Um, but he's also come out and said, and, you know, look, uh, it's, it's going to be hard without having James Gunn at the helm. So, I get that as well. So there's a possibility that he could be back. He's open for it. So that's a good thing. Now, as far as Vin Diesel, Bradley Cooper, as far as Palm, uh, uh, what's her name? The young lady who plays Mantis. Palm, I don't know her last name. Um, but anyway, and uh, Karen Gilliam, uh, who plays Nebula. Uh, I don't know if any of them will be back or not, or if they're interested in playing any of those characters ever again or not. Um, Karen Gillian, probably not. Who knows? Because she has to shave her hair off all of the time and she has to put on all of the makeup and it's probably a chore as well. So mm, I can understand why most of these people aren't going to come back. So it is like saying goodbye to some very close friends and to some family members. And that's what the overall theme about this movie is. It, it, uh, that's what the overall theme in this movie is about is family and friends, you know? So, um, 
it's it's okay if, if, if everybody, if some of the critics are complaining, oh, it's tugging at the heartstrings too much. Eh, so what? Why not? It, it should. We've been with these characters for a long time. Why not? And we're saying goodbye to them. Okay? Why not? So, um, if you trust my opinion, um, I would say full price admission. Um, if you're, if, 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 if you, if you don't trust my opinion, I would say at the very least, give it matinee. All right. Now, if you're on the edge, you don't know which way to go with this. Uh, I would say do some research, get some more opinions, word of mouth and, um, make a judgment on that. All right. So, um, other than that, I think that's it. Uh, this is, uh, the last Marvel movie that I'll be watching for a good while. I'm not interested in the Marvel. Sorry, but I don't, I don't care about Captain Marvel. Um, uh, the first movie I didn't, then, then I did not think it was very good and I'm not interested in the sequel. And after hearing a lot of things that have been going on behind the scenes, I'm not really interested in the movie. Uh, there's probably not going to be a good Marvel movie that I want to see until maybe next year. Maybe I think when Deadpool 3 comes out, I think Deadpool 3 comes out next year. Don't hold me to that. But anyway, that's it as far as Marvel goes. I'm kind of sort of done right now, uh, unless things kind of straighten up a little bit. Uh, this movie will basically dictate um, if superhero fatigue is a thing or not. If it makes enough money, or I don't think it's superhero fatigue. I just think it's bad Marvel movie fatigue, in all honesty. But this movie will dictate, you know, uh, how, uh, what the comic book movie uh, uh, landscape will look like over the next couple of weeks. And we'll be able to decide then. Okay, so, uh, Stan Lee, what do you have to say? I am Stan. Translation. That does it for this episode of the No Spoiler Show. And remember, if it looks like a cat litter box, it must be spoiled. Tune in next time. Excelsior. At least I think that's what he said. My, my stannies is a little rusty. So, see ya.